Hey guys, and welcome to Anchor to Truth. Today we're diving into chapter 26 in the book of Jubilees. So let's get started. All right, guys, let's get started in verse 1. It says, In the seventh year of this week, Isaac called Esau, his elder son, and said unto him, I am old, my son, and behold, my eyes are dim and seen, and I know not the day of my death. And now take thy hunting weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and hunt and catch me venison, my son, and make me savory meat, such as my soul loveth, and bring it to me that I may eat, and that my soul may bless thee before I die. But Rebekah heard Isaac speaking to Esau, and Esau went forth early in the field to hunt and catch and bring home to his father. And Rebekah called Jacob her son and said unto him, Behold, I heard Isaac thy father speak unto Esau thy brother, saying, Hunt for me and make me savory meat and bring it to me that I may eat and bless thee before Yahuwah before I die. And now, my son, obey my voice, in which I command thee, go to, the, go to thy flock, and fetch me two good kids of the goats, and I will make them savory meat for thy father, such as he loveth, and thou shalt bring it to thy father, and he may eat and bless thee before Yahuwah, before he die, and that thou mayest be blessed. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Mother, I shall not withhold anything which my father would eat, and which would please him, only I fear my mother that he will recognize my voice and wish to touch me. And thou knowest that I am smooth, and Esau my brother is hairy, and I shall appear before his eyes as an evildoer, and shall do a deed which he had not commanded me, and he will be wroth with me, and I shall bring upon myself a curse and not a blessing. And Rebekah Rebecca, his mother said unto him, Upon me be thy curse, my son, only obey my voice. Okay, first thing is we already know that Rebecca has already given a blessing, and that blessing was from the Holy Spirit. Right. right? So this is we we now know can we could put the pieces together and say this is a God ordained thing. So we still have to deal with the issue of being being tricky or not or whatever, right? <laughs> All right, what do you guys have in this one? All right, in uh, verse 1, when we look at that, right off the rip, we see here that, so Isaac is old, his <laughs> eyes are dimming, but I also believe that that is a spiritual thing more than it is uh, a physical thing. And as we read through this chapter, I think we're going to kind of see that unfold a little bit more with that. Yeah, I think you're onto something there, Joe. I mean, if we look at the, the ones that preceded him, mm -hmm. well, Abraham, you know, and also in reading... Uh, in other studies, like the Testament of the Twelve Patriarchs, things like that, a lot of these men who are walking in the ways of the Most High, all of them, or most of them, if not all of them, they knew the day of their death, right? Yeah, they, gave I know. Their yeah. they gave their blessing, and then they stretched out their feet and gave up the ghost kind of thing, right? right. Like, but they knew that. And we're being told here, and I know not the day of my death. So I, I think that's kind of a glimpse into what yep. we're looking at here. That's just my take on that. Yeah, that, that was my first indicator is all through our, our past studies and reading the 12 patriarchs. And it's almost like everyone's like, hey, my time is coming and I want to do my blessing, get everything off my chest I need to say. And then it always says, and they, like you said, either they drew up their feet or they did whatever and they went to go be with their fathers. I think I think another aspect of it that, you're, that I I kind of pull out of it is like he he doesn't know when so it's like it could be coming any day now um, mm -hmm. it's almost like he he starts to feel the crunch time and he's still kind of fallen into the original trap of I kind of like my son Esau and it's like yeah but God told me the angel told me Rebecca told me hey you mm -hmm. know they were they were going to be striving in the belly number two is going to be number one that's just how it is sorry. I know you love Esau and, you know, I love Esau too, but he's not the child that's going to carry forth the, uh, the promise and the, the covenant as, as awkward as that's going to be. And as much as that breaks family tradition, mm -hmm. that that's how this is going to work. So I think he's kind of getting a little bit of like the, I, I don't know when I'm going to die, but I, I can, I'm feeling the indicators. So let me try to do my last little bit of work. Let me try to get my last little bit of blessings out or whatever. And I think it kind of what it does is it forces the issue. It kind of pushes the story along a little bit quicker than it would have if he was 12 years old. It's like, oh, I'm getting old, but I don't know when I'm going to die. So if I don't do something now, it could be tonight. It could be tomorrow. Um, so I think I think it's not so much that he was unaware. It was that he was starting to feel the crunch. 
Mm-hmm. And, and I think the reason why we see that a little bit is he's like, hey, go make me my last final meal. Like, I don't know, this might be the last time I get to eat good again. So go get my right. favorite food. And um, I did want to bring that point up because he sends Esau off with the hunting weapons, the the bow and the um, and the quiver. And he says, go get the savory meat. You know what I love. Let me eat it one more good time. And, you know, Rebecca's over there eavesdropping. But <laughs> only for the sake of probably just keeping on top of stuff and making sure things right. are running according. Because the Lord gave her such specific things to say and such specific details on the blessing and other things. She's like, I, I got I to gotta kind of watch out for things as it goes on. And then right there in verse 4, uh, the very first sentence of it says, And Esau went forth early to the field to hunt and catch. So... You know, I I know Esau gets a bad rap a lot of times, but according to like a workman's workman, he got up early and handled his business. He, yeah. Dad said, go go get the meat. And he said, OK, I'm not going to wait till noon and sleep in all day. He got up nice and early. That's when you go hunting either early in the middle of the night still sometimes. But it, it's for sure bright and early. And right. he got up bright and early and did what, he, did what his dad asked. So he wasn't disobedient. He might not have had the right heart. But he did. He did what it was asked of him. And, you know, it kind of gives us another indicator of early in the morning is when you go hunting, not, you know, at the beginning of your day, not not yeah. later in the day at some weird time. Well, remember, too, now he, he knows that he's getting a blessing. He's like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's, you know, my brother's already took uh, my lentil soup. I give away my birthright. But he, you know, everyone back then, it didn't matter if you were good, bad or evil, whatever. They all understood the power of a blessing, how how important yeah. that was to mm-hmm. you, especially from the patriarch of a family, passing that down to his sons. And typically it was for the older one to receive that blessing. So I think some of that too. Now, I, I believe he was probably a guy who got up early in the morning. I think he loved the Bible says he loved to hunt. Mm-hmm. Basically, when you read into it, he this was his jam. I mean, this, this is what he loved to do. So now I'm gonna go do what I what I love to do. On top of that, dad's giving me a blessing. Man, I'm, I'm gonna be up as early as possible to go out there and catch that game, and to bring it back and prepare it. And I'm, I'm excited because you know I'm gonna get my blessing. Mm-hmm. So let me throw this out there to you guys, see what you think about this. So, you know, one of the things that we see kind of repeated throughout Scripture is seeking Yah early, right? And there's a lot of reference to that being a literal thing, like. When you wake up, like get up early specifically for this to seek him out kind of thing before you start your day. So I, I almost wonder if there's a reference to this that, you know, there's there's information that we don't that we don't know. It doesn't mean that he didn't get up and seek Yah before he went hunting or whatever, because it's it's not there. It doesn't tell us that. But I wonder if this is an insight that almost like this is what he was doing rather than seeking Yah early as he got up early to go do this thing. So I, I, I don't know. I guess I guess it's possible to, to see that out of there. The other thing I was going to ask is, at least up to this point in the case, do you think it's possible for someone to look at this and say, okay, is this Isaac intentionally going against the Most High? Well, <laughs> I have two theories. Okay. I know my hands are big, so let's say I'm showing up three, but it's really just two. I just, can't really fold the other finger that well. There we go. <laughs> You're just, just like this. <laughs> so, yeah. So, anyway, uh, here's my theory. Is that either, because when I read the the, the event in, in Genesis on this account, to me, when I read it out of there, it, it seems like, I almost feel like Jacob, I mean, I'm sorry, I keep saying Jacob. I almost feel like Isaac and Rebecca are in on this together in that this is, this is the way to get their son to do what he needs to do. Um, I also see it that the other, on the flip side is it, if it is because Isaac is dim, he's dimming his years. Now, remember, uh, I don't know the age gap right off the hand, but there is, I believe a very significant age gap between Isaac and Rebecca. Like she was a young maiden. He was already like up in age. Like he, he's, he's her senior by some time now. So I can see the fact that he is a much older man at this point. Um, and maybe not quite as sharp in the mental faculties and could just very well, this, this is just him being an old guy, you know, not, not really knowing any better. So one of the two is happening. Either they're in on it together 
And they're doing this so that, you know, Jacob will go through with this and do what he needs to do. Or he really is just become a very old, older man and just, you know. I, I think I, that's, know. I, I think that's possible that they could be in on this together. One, they sent Esau out of the house. Right, two, exactly. Two, uh, at least to this point, we don't have any reference in, you know, in, in Genesis or whatever. We don't have any reference to look at, at least yet anyway. You know, we haven't got there in the study yet. But at least yet, we don't have anything where where Isaac is, you know, coming down on Rebecca. You know, oh, you shouldn't have done that. Exactly. Or, or oh, Jacob. Or Jacob, yeah. Right? And even when he's, when, when Esau does come in there, bless me too, right? We kind of know how the story goes from the 66, right? Well. <laughs> bless me too. And, did, you know, did you save any blessing for me, right? Yeah. Um, and when we and, read, I was say, when we read further into this, we probably may not get into it today or whatever, but the wording in here between the wording in this and the wording in the Genesis account makes me still feel like Jacob, I mean, Isaac knew what, what exactly was going on because, again, the same point you just brought up, he finds out, hey, by the way, because when Esau shows up, he's like, oh, sorry, son. And went to the other brother. He wasn't like he was like, oh, that sneaky little right, right. younger brother. I mean, I can't believe he did that to me and tricked his father and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, he's like, oh, sorry, bro. Oh, uh, yeah, I got a blessing for you, but you ain't going to like it that much. But yeah, I got, <laughs> I'll give you a little something. Right. You know, so that's why when I the first time I've read this account many times before I ever read in Jubilees, my first thought was, Isaac doesn't respond to somebody who just got duped big time. Right. And how was it that your other son that you just had a conversation with at the very beginning when he shows up later, you're acting like you're dumb. Like, who is this? Who's fixed me another meal? Who was it? Or who showed up before him? Oh, my gosh. What happened? You know, it's kind of like looking around, like playing the old man card. I don't know. But I, I just I, I still think this is a little bit of a setup. That's all. <laughs> And, well, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Just last thing before you go, I'm sorry. But anybody who's, especially if it's their favorite meal, you know, go 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 fix this, go go cook, you know, so I can have my favorite meal. Now, in in this translation, it tells us that it was um, venison. That it was venison. But even if it was a wild goat or whatever, here's the thing: goat has a very distinct flavor. I know. Very different yeah. from venison. But I have that even, highlighted in my book, by the way. <laughs> but even if it was, you know, go 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 kill me a wild goat versus the ones that we're raising. Yeah, they taste very very different. I know you would know the difference. Anyway, right. sorry. Okay, yeah. go ahead, Jonathan. I'm sorry, brother. Yeah, no. So I think you know, like not not to say a third option, but you know, in, instead of it being a he was in on it or he got duped, it's almost like at the very end of verse two, it just says that my soul may bless thee before I die. So I I, I wonder and kind of put forth the option that it wasn't really any kind of transactional anything. He kind of already knew what was going to happen. He kind of already, everything was set up, but yet he still loved his son. He was like, that my soul may bless thee. He didn't say that I might give you stuff or that I give you some inheritance. You know, we don't really see a, a transfer of, uh, goods and services or anything we just kind of say hey go hook, give me my good meal because i'm you know i don't know what i'm dying and my soul my who i am wants to bless you okay. and so then it, it makes it a real personal thing between the two of them it's not a family thing it's not a rebecca and jacob need to show up and you know powers combine or anything it's just more of like a hey you're still my oldest you're still my boy i know you can hunt your butt off go take go take this cool hunting stuff and go get me the thing that i like to eat and i think from his perspective, everything's already in place. I don't think there is any real trickery per se, but the only reason why I say that they're probably still some kind of issue. There's still, there's still an underlying underpinning emotional something that's happening because Rebecca then goes around and says, well, un, upon me be the curse. If the, if anything goes wrong, if anything goes bad, let me take the curse. Mm -hmm. So she knows there, hey, there's something something's not a hundred percent up and up here is it but it's god ordained so she's like god's on my side and if there is going to be a problem god told me directly so let god give me the curse directly if, if it's if it's truly me doing something wrong by me following his voice that's going to be on me because i have to do what he tells me 
And if the spirit literally told me to go A, B, and C, I'm going to A, B, and C. And whatever comes of it, comes of it. Jacob, don't worry. It's not going to fall on you because the spirit didn't tell you. It told me. And I'm the one kind of orchestrating all this a little bit behind the scenes. And it wasn't, so, you know, like you guys said, Isaac never turns around. It's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe this happened to me. You got me twice. You know, it was more of like a, yeah, uh, yeah, Jacob definitely got the blessing. And uh, I love you, dude. You know, you're still my oldest. You're still my boy. But that's how it all played out. You know, it's just right. kind of like a matter of fact whenever it does come around to the, you know, all the cards on the table. So, yeah, but I, I just in verse two there definitely kind of that that was something that was big for me where it says, may my soul bless thee before I die. And that that sounds a lot different than the blessing or the inheritance. Well, right. I, I'll I'll throw some more wrenches into this. Okay, the reason why I still think Isaac's in on it is because when we read the Genesis account, both both of the parents, when we get to this part in the story, right before this story in the Genesis account, the wives that Esau has taken, it says that both the mother and the father are very grieved. They were very sad. They were, you know, either I forgot the word it used, but they were grieved or angry or something like that. They were not happy with their son, the choices mm. he was making. So if I'm going to orchestrate this, I'm going to make it look like there's a big boo-boo that just happened because what I'm going to do is, hey, what can we do to get, get Esau away from here? Tell him you want him to go out there and hunt because we know he loves to hunt. And make that favorite savory stew that you like, okay? Whatever it is. Okay, so we're going to get him out. It's going to give us time to work our other son. Now, when she says, let the curse be upon me, she knows there's no curse coming. Uh, mother and father have set this up so that it, there's there's a, I'm trying to think of the right way to say this. They're, they're setting this up, in my opinion, so that when it's all said and done, they're going to fear, one of the things they're going to fear is that Esau is going to want to kill them. I think they do fear their son enough that he would, he would be so angry because in the Genesis account, as soon as all this happens, the mom's like, you need to go and give your brother some basically saying, you need to give your brother some time to cool off. He's, he wants to kill you now, but by the way, we're going to use this opportunity to send you away to get a wife. So everything that happens is like, boom, 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 boom. And because of the decisions that Esau has made, he's going to be out. He's, he's out the picture anyway, but this gives us a good segue into getting Jacob and moving him in the direction he needs to move and launch him in the direction he needs to go. So that's just my, you know, my take uh, looking at both the Genesis account and the Jubilees account so far. And good point. Cause I did highlight this, that the fact that he sends him out to get venison and the mom makes goat. Yeah. Now I don't care how old you are. You're going to know your favorite meal. You're going to know if like cheesecake is one of my favorite desserts ever probably my favorite dessert but if somebody brought me some strawberry shortcake i'd be like that ain't that ain't cheesecake <laughs> <laughs> right you know what, what what is this you bring me it tastes right. good but that's not cheesecake right so i think that, that's why i think there's still a little bit you know the other thing is you never see esau getting angry with his father or or rebecca right either right right so it really truly does make it seem like everybody it's it's like they already know not only what the fa the heavenly father has mm -hmm. told them but it's it's like they already know the deal that was made between jacob and esau and all that stuff right like it's 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 as if everybody's in the know and maybe esau didn't want them to know or didn't know that they knew but they know anyway and when I when I read nine, when I read this, where where she says, "Upon me by be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice." The way I hear that is, "Mama's got this. If there's any issues, it's yeah. on me. I right. got this." Right. Well, like, so so it this is it, it's it's almost nonchalant, if you will. Right. To, you know, just hey, don't worry about it. Don't, I don't got, fear it. Got I, yeah, I got this. Right. Um, now the only caveat to all that we're saying is going to come when we get uh, later, either in this teaching or the next one, uh, we'll be in verse eighteen. Well, we, and we'll we're not there it. yet, but I'm just saying I'm, I know there's people who've already read ahead, and, and if they're in the comments, they may be saying it right now. <laughs> what about we haven't got there yet? So we'll talk about that when we get there. If the, so, but there is one caveat in this chapter that kind of like will throw another wrench into the uh the works there so two gears were you ready to get it let's get it let's get it all right let's pick it back up in verse 10 
And it says, And Jacob obeyed the voice of Rebekah, his mother, and went and fetched two good and fat kids of the goats and brought them to his mother. And his mother made them savory meat, such as he loved. And Rebekah took the, the goodly raiment of Esau, her elder son, which was with her in the house. And she clothed Jacob, her younger son, with them. And she put the skins of the kids upon his hand and on the exposed parts of his neck. And she gave the meat and the bread, which she had prepared into the hand of her son, Jacob. And Jacob went into his father and said, I am thy son. I have done according to thou uh, badest me arise and sit and eat of that, which I have caught father that thy soul may bless me. And Isaac said to his son, how hast thou found so quickly, my son? And Jacob said, because Yahuwah thy Elohim caused me to find. And Isaac said unto him, come near that I might fill thee, uh, my son, if thou art my son Esau or not. And Jacob went near to Isaac, his father, and he felt him and said, The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hand are the hands of Esau. And he discerned him not because it was a dispensation from heaven to remove his power of perception. And Isaac discerned not, for his hands were hairy as his brother, brother Esau, so that he blessed him. Dun, dun, dun. Dun. And there it is. Okay, there we is, know boy. we got to get to that. Y'all want to talk about any of this other stuff up front first? <laughs> any of this, other stuff? This, this is the best part right here, man. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and address it then. We might as well. Yeah. So there it is. So, yes, clearly right. he discerned him not. So he didn't know. Isaac didn't right. know that this was him. Right. Because right. it was dispensation from heaven to remove his power of perception, mm. and Isaac discerned not, for his hands were hairy. So this comes down from the Most High, uh, for his hands were hairy as his brother Esau, so that he blessed him not. So his perception was way off. I don't yeah. care how hairy somebody is, they ain't gonna feel like a goat. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> They don't sound the same. They probably ain't the same height or same build. That don't apparently, feel anything well, like a hairy arm. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. everything's off. And apparently they took away his his, uh, his uh, discernment of what goat and venison tastes like as well. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So it's it's interesting, like right right there at the beginning in 10, because it does start off with telling them that, Hey, they, they went ahead and did the thing. So the, the mom right. said, go get them, go get the meat. The mom made the meat and the, the whole dish. And so that now literally everybody's involved. You know, we can't, we can't try to pretend like that somebody got <laughs> snuck in. Everybody's, Everybody's got something. their hands in on it. <laughs> right. Some of them hairy, but, um, and then it says, Rebe uh, Rebecca took the, the goodly raiment. I'm guessing that just means like his clothes. Um, and then turned around, like you said, put the fur on his hands and his neck. It's like, come on, that's, yeah. I, I immediately reading that, I was like, oh, that's ridiculous. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how hairy is someone's neck got to be to be the same texture as a goat? That's, that's, um, wow. You know, I don't even... we don't know, man. I mean, uh, Esau may have been like the wolf man of the pack. I don't know. It's like, just. <laughs> I, even still, there's a difference between hair and fur. fur. Yeah. I don't know. But even still, so, you know, they, they do their best to, perform the trickery um it looks like they didn't do a good job by modern standards but um gave the meat and the bread to isaac and uh jacob went in so this is the part where you know we talk about what's a what's a lie what's not a lie when's okay to lie when's not okay to lie jacob went in and said i'm i'm your son yeah and i went and hunted and and and, and right. god gave me supernatural hunting oh, yeah. ability I, I i got the i got the deer immediately as soon as i walked out the door the deer was just sitting there already pre-slain and cut up <laughs> um so that's the part where you know it gets a little more interesting for me in like 13 when he's like i am your son i did everything you told me i caught it god gave it to me it's like man that that's a lot of details you know to try to get one over you know the, there's a difference in Oh yeah, you know, it was just an easy hunt day and then move on. But like, nope, I'm literally your son. I literally hunted. I literally yeah. Right. You you kind of digging yourself a little bit of a hole there. Well yeah, verse first fifteen kind of makes me cringe a little bit though when he says that though. Well, I kind of disagree on that because and the reason why is it, it, it he doesn't say it's, I went and hunted. A, I know it's a play on words. Well, so it's 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 not a direct lie, it's a lie by deception. 
Mm. Meaning, Remind meaning, me not to be your friend. Meaning, meaning, <laughs> meaning, okay, so hear me out. So he, so either way, I agree. He, there, it's, it's a lie, but it's a, it is a lie by deception because, um, the question is, how hast thou found so quickly, my son? He still is son, so he's answering. And yeah. Jacob said, because Yahuwah thy Elohim calls me to find. He didn't say, oh yeah, I went out and I shot this thing with my arrow, and I'm just a good shot, and I took care of business. No, they, uh, because Yahuwah thy Elohim calls me to find. He did. He found a goat in the yard. So all of that is truthful information, but it's still deceptive information in the, right. in the circumstance. Right? So he didn't say he hunted. Um, he and he didn't even say he didn't even say that he was Esau. If we go down to sixteen, uh, come near that I might may feel thee to, if thou art my son, uh, my son Esau or not. He didn't say, "Oh yeah, I'm Esau." He said he just went over to him, and the and the father felt him and said, "The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are hands of Esau." So and and then he blessed him. Yeah. So I mean. He didn't directly lie, but he was very, very deceptive in all of this. He he let right. his he let let me put it let me rephrase it differently. He let his father believe the lie, right? Or or the deception. But is it really? Is it really? Dis, I I, don't, I really don't know how to discern this. So so hear me out right. for a minute. Track track with me on this real quick, guys. The Most High is not going to take away our free will, right? He gives us He gives us the ability to choose blessings or curses, right? Right. But it clearly says in here that his perception was removed, and we know we have other scriptures where, like Pharaoh's eyes were blinded, and so on and so forth, right? That was that a perception thing, obviously, right? Right. Uh, or heart, excuse me, heart was hardened and mm -hmm. and other people's eyes have been blinded or whatever. Is this a perception thing? Is this so that is this their perception being taken away from them? So that they simply believe what they wanted to believe in the first place. It's I'm going to take your perception away so that you have to deal with the heart. I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, no, well, it's a tough one. I'll I'll throw my my idea in here, and, and and it's not so much that like yeah, he for sure lied, but it's more it's more of we don't even get to this point of any of these events happening if Rebecca wasn't eavesdropping around the back of the tent, told Jacob all the details mm -hmm. of everything. Otherwise, Jacob would have showed up, but like I don't know, Dad, what's up? And instead, he's he brought him every <laughs> single detail of every single thing that he only told to Esau. So th they're they're Jake, it's not like Jacob's like, oh, I'm just going to let you believe what you want to believe. It's more of like, I already know what you're looking for. I already know all the details of the story. So I'm going to kind of allow this narrative to continue to play out because I, by not the right reasons, got this information in the first place. And then I'm going to try to right. fill in the blanks with my own thoughts, feelings, and ideas. Because otherwise, he would have brought him cinnamon rolls. But he was like, oh, no, he asked for savory meat soup. So I, I got to make sure I get meat. and It's got to be savory. I'm going to have mom hook it up. Oh, well, I know he's going to be trying to bless Esau. So let me figure out a way so I can get the blessing. So, you know, otherwise he wouldn't have known those things. So that's why I said that there had to have been at least some kind of conscious thought of what he was doing and why, because he knew all the details beforehand. It was kind of like he had the cheat sheet and then he just followed the cheat sheet. Yeah. You know, when I, when I look at, you know, the story keeps playing in my head over and over and over. And if it wasn't for, 18 i would have said i would have stuck to my narrative of they're both in on it because that was my narrative for a long time but what i'm what i'm again my brain comes back around to this the fact that that uh isaac's old and i i here's the thing i don't think he's intentionally trying not to do what the father's will is but let's say he really is that old where he's just not it's almost like your dad's not in his right mind, and I know what he's getting ready to do, and we can't allow him to do this, so we're going to have to step in, and we're going to have to make this happen. And not only that, but if it's got an 18, it says she's got the the heaven basically backing her on this. You know, and heaven stay says, and because it says it's this dispensation, 
And verse 18 says, it was a dispensation from heaven to remove his power of perception and Isaac discern not. Uh -huh. So this makes me wonder again, if it, maybe the whole dimming thing is a spiritual thing where it's, he's, he's lost his spiritual discernment anyway. He's not really, he doesn't realize what he's doing is a bad thing possibly. Maybe. I wouldn't, I wouldn't see him like mm. purposefully going against the father, but it's almost like because of where he is in life and being older, Rebecca being much younger is going to step in and go, okay, we're going to, we're going to do this. And I need you to listen to your mother. Uh, I mean, we just came through this whole thing of me blessing you and the Holy Spirit's moving. And we know that this is the right way to go. I know it's one of those things when we look back on it, we're like, God is like, does this the way it had to play out? Or is this, you know, the way it had to be, you know, with the deception, it feels like, you know, we always talk about the deception and everything, but at some point, um, if, if, heaven's backing this and it tells me that what they're doing is it, and we're never told this was wrong if you go back and you look at the lane which again because i kind of went back and highlight some of the things so when jacob in verse 13 if you pull up for me it says and jacob went into his father and said i am thy son did he lie nope no i am your son okay and it wasn't even like he was trying to talk like his brother trying you know <laughs> he'll change his voice at all he's talking like jacob I am thy son, and I have done according to thou badest me, arise and sit and eat, and that which I have caught. Now, technically, did he catch it? Well, he went over there and got him, so technically you could say he caught the meat or whatever. <laughs> and Isaac said to his son, how is thou found so quickly? And he says, Jacob said, because Yahuwah thy Elohim calls me to find it. And so, again, I think this is another play on words where he's not directly coming right out and saying, yeah, I went and grabbed two goats and mom chopped them up and you know, made a soup for you. Hey Joe, real quick though, one of, one of the things that I kind of want to say to that point though is, yeah. he's not that far out of his right mind. He was like, "Hey, you came back way too fast. I know right. how long it takes to hunt. Right, I'm, right. I'm, I'm I'm still a right. grown up. Like I'm not an idiot. Don't treat me like I'm in diapers eating prunes. Like I understand that if you're right. going hunting, you're not going to make food in 30 minutes. Like you, right. you didn't even have time to get it. So you know, you could tell he's kind of he, he has some. Oh questions. yeah, I'm not saying he's senile, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah. So, so maybe mild dementia, but not Alzheimer's. <laughs> I, 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 I have to entertain that thought that there might be something there because I just can't get it in my mind that the most high would, would participate in something that was deception. Right. You know, so that, I think that's one of the reasons why we struggle, why we all struggle with this particular thing in scripture so much yeah. is because to us, it seems like a deception when that may not be the case. I'll be honest with you. I think your thought process of maybe there's some kind of um, cognitive issues going on yeah. potentially may be the best explanation or best potential explanation that I've heard of this where it would make sense for the Most High, Rebecca and Isaac to be doing the right thing and it somehow still be quote unquote deceptive to Isaac or excuse me. Right. Did I say Jacob? I said, Isaac. okay. Rebecca, right. Jacob and the most high to be doing the right things. And Isaac being the one that is, if we want to use the word deceived, but perception, right. rem, you know, removed mm. I, that that's the only thing that so far makes sense to me that the father would be involved in. So uh, anyway, keep going. I'm sorry. No, that, that was pretty much it for me. I just, um, just, just the wording that he uses. Cause he, he, as I don't think if I'm looking at it again, that he ever says I am Esau. No, he doesn't. Mm -hmm. He just says, Hey, I'm your son. I'm here. <laughs> uh -huh. So. Yeah. It was almost he, like Isaac was biding his time. But what I think is interesting too, is whenever we look at, the perception being removed, I, I do. It's it's an interesting concept because we all, like Kyle said, you know, we have our free will. God's given us the ability, the option to kind of do what we want. But we do see throughout Scripture multiple times where something kind of happens where it's like, oh, God hardened his heart. God turned the donkey the other way, or you know, the all these other mm -hmm. stories where it's like, I'm not telling you you can't do this. I'm just going to kill you unless you do it. <laughs> you know, like, and so, you know, like with the donkey, he was like, hey, I stopped because otherwise the angel was going to, was going to tear you up. You, you weren't going to make it. So 
um it's interesting to see like there is some interaction and it's almost like if it's in my will i'm you know i'm speaking for god if, if god's like if it's in my will it's going to pass it's going to go through it's right. I, if i have to if i have to split right. the sea it, whatever it takes my will will occur and it, it is the will for jacob to be the one who carries on the lineage because i already know better right so if it if it's where i have to kind of make uh isaac a little bit goofy for a minute you know like hey it may by natural means maybe he drank too much that night maybe you know we don't we don't know what it was that caused this to happen but god was like you're not going to be in your 100 percent right mind and it's not going to be like you did anything wrong or you sinned it's just i'm just gonna make it so that way you follow along and it nobody's at fault here you know he's not like oh and then isaac was some big terrible guy because he has no idea how to do a blessing it was just yeah isaac didn't know any better and it just happened and we moved on and don't worry about it because it wasn't God's plan. So it, it is right. definitely an interesting concept because it makes you think, how often does this happen in like our real world today? How, how often are we, you know, at the store and the guy's like, huh, I was going to charge you 500 bucks, but I just feel like 100 bucks is good for this. You know, my perception on normal labor costs is gone, you know, and it works in our favor or vice mm -hmm. versa. It just kind of makes you wonder, is God's truly that intimately involved in our day to day life to make things like this happen? back then why, why not you know just in and around our lives so just something to think about and to ponder i see something cool here uh oh right, so, cool like the other side of the pillow yeah so okay. check this out so the holy spirit came upon rebecca for her to give the blessing that she gave right yeah. we don't see that same process playing out with isaac but I think I know why. The reason why is because he is the one who has the authority to hand down that blessing that has already been given to Abraham and then it was passed to Isaac mm -hmm. and now it is going to be passed to Jacob because he is the one who's holding that blessing and he's simply passing that down because it's in the words. It's in the words it says that my soul may bless thee. Mm -hmm. right not that the most high bless that my soul bless thee right so it's something that i have the authority to hand down mm -hmm. so i maybe maybe that's key there so i i think all of this comes into play together that's really cool and i almost wonder if rebecca's the blessing that she was handing down was a was a backup you know like <laughs> just in case dad don't act right you know <laughs> right. you know <laughs> Anyway, just something to consider. We would well, love to hear y'all's thoughts absolutely. on this in the comments. So please fill it up and tell us all you, all, what all you think. Well, here here's the, the messy part of all of this is that God has to work through us. Mm -hmm. And so it's, when we when we're reading through all the you know, the stories of the patriarchs and all that stuff, I mean, even getting all the way when we we uh, we have already been through the Torah portion with Joseph and his brothers and all that stuff, and we read this multiple times is that with family there's always a mess there's it's, it's usually not always you know rainbows and unicorns and all that stuff and so we have to remember too is the father's working through us who are imperfect <laughs> and the rest of the story you're going through with all of this stuff you know it's it's not pretty <laughs> mm -hmm. you know there's things that happen you know when uh you know when you look at jacob um, and you look at the uh, 12 tribes come out of four different women and then that whole story there and the birth, I, ca I call it the birthing wars. And now I've found favor because God has given me this and now this and this, and I need you to give me your love apples and I'm going to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And here's my maid. Oh, really? Well, here's my maiden. And it's like this whole thing. And it's like all for us to get to the birth of the 12 tribes of Israel. <laughs> There's all this extra family because God's having to work through this mess all of us and so sometimes i'm sure i feel like the father goes oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what are we gonna do now but so as much as you know everything you know the, the way the stories go and the way we read them like oh my gosh you're, you're using deception all this stuff and god's like we're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get through this <laughs> we're gonna make it the 12 tribes will come out of this lineage and there will be that promise of that blessing of Abraham that I promised way back 
all that will come forth. So, all I know is I think the birthing wars would make for an awesome title for a video. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's cool. Well, why don't we go ahead and uh, at least read the next two verses real quick, so we might get a little bit more, a little bit more info in on this. All right, let's do it. Let's uh, pick it up at uh, nineteen. And he said, "Art thou my son Esau?" And he said, "I am thy son." And he said, "Bring near, near, near to me, that I may eat of that which thou hast caught, my son, that my soul may bless thee." And he and he brought near to him, and he did eat, and he brought him wine, and he drank. Mm. Hmm. So, yet again, he's being asked directly this time. Yeah. Oh yeah, art thou <laughs> my son Esau? And he still doesn't answer him directly. I could, am thy son. Could you do that more <laughs> in English? Could you say that more in an English as, accent for us, Kyle? Art thou my son, Esau? I don't know. <laughs> that kind of sucks, but anyway. That is going to get edited out for sure. <laughs> Art thou my son, Esau? No. Art thou my son, Esau? Why, why does yours always sound like berries and cream? Berries, berries and cream. cream. <laughs> that's, for, that's for you, brother. That's your favorite commercial. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, I, I agree with you. I, I, you know, the, at the end of here, you still see Esau is, um, I'm sorry, not Esau, but you see Jacob still not completely lying. He doesn't say, Oh, yeah, I'm Esau. You know, he just says, I'm your son. Right. So I think, I think he's being a little bit, you know, he's, he's trying his best. He, I honestly think his conscience is killing him this entire time because he loves his dad. Yeah. It's not like he hates his dad. Because earlier in the, in the passage, he was like, he's like, he basically is telling his mom in a roundabout way, I really don't want to do this to my dad. Right. You know, I was like, I don't want to lie to him. And then what happens if he turns around and said, bless him, he curses me. Because that's how powerful, you know, the spoken word is. And that's when the mom has to reassure her son, go, nope, hey, if there's any curse whatsoever, mama, mama, take it. Don't worry about it. So, but here again, we see that this, or there is a play on words and, um, you know, and he, he doesn't come right out and say he's not. I love that we can read through this and come to the conclusions, uh, based on the full context of the scriptures together that we can, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm glad that we can study with you guys at home. <laughs> this is, this is awesome. So, uh, whether you're, uh, studying out for the first time with us or not, man, I think that's awesome that we can, that we can see this together. And look, we're, we're late, you know, we're working through this as much as everybody else. Like that's, you know, and that's why the three of us together work so well together because we we balance each other. And when we're, you know, we just, you know, I know they said two heads are better than one, but how about three? You know, why not? <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I still catch stuff. I've studied this multiple times and and read it and listened to it a lot more times, but I, I still get yep. more information every time. So. Amen. Mm-hmm. So what we see is just this huge story of. The Bible is going to be true. The story is going to pass along through one man to another man, you know, the women involved as well. And these these things are going to happen. One, because they were prophesied. Two, because the Holy Spirit in this story especially spoke through Rebecca. This is what's going to happen. This is when, this is how, this is your blessing. These things now have to pass. So whether if somebody's in the way, they have to then get out of the way because these things will happen and will occur according to the word spoken. And which you and we see that in uh, verse six, it says, and now, my son, obey my voice in that which I command thee. She's not speaking on her own accord here. She's not speaking out of just generalities of I'm your mom. Do what I say. She's like, I know what the spirit told me. I know the dream that I had and the visions that I've had. And I understand the way the Lord's been working through me and the way that you and Esau have been plaguing each other throughout life and who's going to win and who doesn't. And I know a little bit about your lentil soup and I, I know how this has played out. And unfortunately slash fortunately, this is how it's going to continue to go. Do what I say, not because I'm your mom, but because I'm speaking still on behalf of the words that were given to me. And I'm going to hold those promises to be true and they're going to be 100% accurate. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be on team God. And unfortunately for Isaac, you know, he, he had a little bit of a differing opinion wasn't a wrong opinion, but it was different. And God said, no, the answer is Jacob. Rebecca said, yes, sir. And then you see them you know, walk that out by some slightly unconventional means. So whether God's talking to you to do something that makes sense or doesn't make sense, if he tells you to do it, 
you go and do it and hopefully it lines up with scripture so you can preach along the way. Amen. Now, next we're about to be talking about the uh, blessing. I know we're going to be getting into that. But if you want to see about the blessing that Jacob has already received, check out one of these videos right here. And we'll see you next time. God bless. Shalom. Ciao. I am my son, father.